This video won't go into performance metrics, but I will focus on a few important and notable features of the ASUS VivoBook 16X OLED and offer suggestions about other laptops in a similar market with similar features that you would consider investing in. Welcome to Ryan Reviews, let's get started. I've been using this laptop for about three weeks and I came to two conclusions. The first is that it's a cut down version of the competition when it comes to OLED equipped laptops, or it's a great value option for content creation and consumption. So let's start with the budget and competition, which are similar to this laptop with either an OLED panel or a screen tuned for content creation work because that is arguably one of the biggest requirements as a content creator. Performance is just as important, but in this day and age, and any laptop with uh, the latest Intel AMD processor and a dedicated graphic card can handle content creation decently. And I personally feel that budget is one of the biggest constraints as well. If you're a budding creator that is on a tight budget, but you do need something that works while you're also exploring other options in the market, then this video will help you try and sort out your thoughts uh, while using this as sort of a benchmark as comparison. In this category of laptops, three of them come to my mind. The first is the M1 equipped 16 inch MacBook Pro, Gigabyte's Aero 15.6 inch OLED and the XPS 15 OLED. They all come with screens that are designed with content creation in mind and they're all above 1080p resolution and that attempts to achieve really great color accuracies as well with P3 uh, and then there's sRGB and Adobe RGB. And when you start to look at the price tags and the specs, that's when things become a little more differentiated. So the base model of the 16 inch M1 MacBook Pro costs $3,750, which is, I would say it's a premium compared to say, Gigabyte's OLED 15.6 inch laptop, which is just 2,700. And the XPS 15 OLED actually matches the MacBook Pro's chonky price tag as well. All of that brings me to this, the VivoBook uh, 16X OLED. All this comes in at just $2,600 and I'm, as I'm writing this script, a promo price of $2,005. And you might be thinking, wow, why is this laptop like much cheaper compared to competition? So remember when I said that there were two ways to see this laptop? The first is that it's a cut down version of the competition when it comes to OLED equipped laptops, or it's a great value option for content creation and consumption. To achieve this competitive price tag, I felt that Asus might have made some sacrifices when it came to choosing the quality of the components. First, the speakers are really soft. Like, they're functional, but I had to increase the volume quite a bit to listen to music. Uh, while Asus did include a fingerprint sensor in the home button, for me, it wasn't very consistent. Half the time, I just used the pin to log in instead. The keyboard and trackpad is also fine. There's literally nothing remarkable about it, but it gets the job done. It doesn't feel as responsive when bottoming out as I press all the keys, but the thing is, this is sufficient for what you need it to do. It's not disruptive to your workflow and it's fine. Unfortunately though, even if it's marketed as a content creation laptop, it comes with a micro SD card slot rather than a full-sized one. Really? ASUS? Uh, and the USB-C here doesn't do power delivery, so you can't charge it with a USB-C power brick. All new laptops should have the option of charging via USB-C, even if it's a, a slower rate like 65 watts or 100 watts. It, the option there is important. It's not just having them charge with one brick. That being said though, all these cost saving measures means that they've got a higher budget for the OLED screen and that's where it shines, quite literally. It's the brightest and most vibrant display that I've ever used and tested on, going up to 550 nits in brightness. It is eye-searingly bright, good if you need it to be that bright. For me, I just tone it down to about 50% because that's literally already shining brighter than uh, my, my future. With bigger laptops, manufacturers usually have more space to incorporate components that can be upgraded on your own. Sometimes you need more storage. Sometimes you've got to replace the dying Wi-Fi card or you just need to upgrade to like maybe 64 gigs of RAM. Fortunately and unfortunately, after unscrewing these 11 top screws, 
Torx screws, great. And the back panel reveals only two out of three upgradable parts. The single slot PCIe Gen 3 for storage and the Wi-Fi card. The RAM is 16 gig of solid memory and that's kind of holding it back because in Singapore's market, there's no 32 gig RAM option. And if you're kind of stuck with this 16 gig of RAM. And since it's PCIe Gen 3 instead of 4, if you buy a Gen 4 SSD to upgrade, this laptop won't net you the speed benefits. So it's kind of a bottleneck. At the very least, I guess they included this really stylish hand carry only bag with the laptop. Uh, so for about $2,500, these are the key points to consider. Price, how ASUS may have achieved this price tag and whether whatever I said actually sits well with you. If you can live with it, then consider the ASUS VivoBook 16X OLED for your content creation workflow. If not, just subscribe to Ryan Reviews because honestly, ah, I need it. I'm kind of in a rut right now and I like, if you, if you find that this was helpful and useful, subscribe, like, thank you for watching this review and uh, I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.